So this video is going to cover how to exploit the ESC1 vulnerability whenever you're pen testing Active Directory certificate services. The main vulnerability that we're exploiting or the main misconfigurations I should say is that whenever a template is configured with a few uh, misconfigurations such as not requiring a manager approval, um, allowing low level users such as domain users or authenticated users to enroll in a template or obtain that certificate and also um, and I would say most importantly is allowing the requestee to supply any SAN in the request so they essentially get to request that certificate as a different user which in this case will be a domain admin account which leads into obtaining the NTLM hash of that domain admin and to do this, we'll be using a tool called Certify, which is also by the researchers that um, released this really great white paper, which is Will Schreider and Lee Christensen. And I'll link that in the description below. Um, so we'll do the exploit. Then after that, we'll look at the certificate authority so you can see how uh, creating a certificate looks and how it's very easy to make these misconfiguration. We'll do the recommended fix and then we'll take a look after the fix to see if it's still exploitable, which it won't be. But we'll do all that in this video. Um, I also have another one exploring the ESC8 vulnerable um, NTLM relaying against HTTP endpoints. So that video is already out and I'll link below uh, to check that out as well. So let's get started. All right, so like I mentioned, we'll be using the certify command and we'll be using the find option. Um, and right over here is the certify tool. Um, if we scroll down to the ESC1 section, it'll give you step by step and a bit of explanation on how it's exploited. To get more information though, I do recommend the white paper. It has a lot more information along with the recommendations as well and how to fix it. Uh, but we'll go into the recommendations towards the end of the video. So again, we'll be using the find option of certify past the low level credentials of the user that you have. Um, this user has no privileges at all. It's literally just in the domain users group and then supply the DCIP or the IP address of the domain controller. The way Certify does the find or outputs the information from the find is it performs an LDAP search. It locates the certificate authorities and then it um, finds the templates owned by each of those certificate authorities and then enumerates those um, and then declares based on those configurations of the templates if it's vulnerable to certain things or certain ESC um, Xs. Um, I do have a manual way on exploiting the AC8 vulnerability, which I have in the video, and it'll go into using LDAP search to find certificate authorities, but do that for enumerating templates is very, very tedious. So we'll be just using the certify find command. So press um, enter to execute. You'll get some of these errors because it's doing different methods to enumerate, but that's totally fine. And what we'll do is um, We'll look at this output. It does have it in a zip, um, which is Bloodhound compatible, and it does have a .json file as well. So we'll be looking at the text file, and the first thing I like to do is I like to uh, grep for uh, the pattern vuln. So I'll do a dash lowercase i uh, just in case for vol uh, for case insensitive searches, and then dash a1 to find the line after the pattern match, and then the file name we can see that it has uh, two of the ESC1 vulnerabilities along with the ESC8 like I mentioned. I'm um, gonna have a video about that as well. So now we can uh, take a look at these and um, I'll just usually just cat out the file itself or I'll mess with a grep file, a grep command to like output the before lines, but just to make our life a little bit easier, we'll just output the whole thing and take a look. So the first one that we have is the find me 1A um, and we'll be exploiting this one. We'll also have another one that I created with just a little bit of tweaks as well. Find me with uh, 1B. But the one we'll be doing right now is uh, find me 1A. And we can see that the uh, main misconfigurations that it's showing or it flags as being vulnerable to ESC1 is allowing enrollment rights for domain users. So any user can enroll or obtain a certificate from this template. And a template is just a blueprint uh, for a certificate. The next thing that it uh, looks at is the require manager approval. So it's set to false, so it does not require manager approval to obtain the certificate. And I would say the most important one is the enrollee supplies subject set to true. So this means that the person or the user enrolling is able to supply the sound so you can 
request a certificate from this template, but you get to supply the SAN or the other user that it's going to attach to the certificate. And you'll see that that leads to obtaining the NTLM hash of that additional user so we can get the NTLM hash of a domain admin or whoever you'd like. So that we know this is vulnerable, we'll just make a note of the template name and then the uh, certificate authority that owns that template. So we need these two information for the next command. And if you scroll all the way up to the uh, certificate authorities, so the way that Certify outputs this is it first outputs the certi uh, certificate authorities and then it outputs the certificate templates. So we saw below that it is for the Isengard CA. In a real environment, you'll see multiple certificate authorities. So that's why import it's important to get the CA that owns the template. And right here, we're gonna look at these two things right here, which is the CA name. So the name of the certificate authority, like the service of that, of that certificate authority, and then the DNS name, which is the host name of the server. So these two uh, is very important to distinguish because whenever you're performing the next command, you'll see that you need to specify these two strings into different flags on the certify uh, command. So again, this one's the host name of the actual machine, and this is the name of the service of the certificate authority. So whenever you have the server and you're putting that role of ADCS on there, you declare a name for the certificate authority, which is where this comes from. So, so we'll grab these and then put them in our next command. All right, so now to exploit this, we're going to request a certificate from that find me template, and then we're gonna attach the SAN of Gandalf, which is a domain admin in the environment. So let's walk through this command, the certify, the request option, because we're gonna request a um, certificate, pass the credentials of the low level user, and then dash CA for the certificate authority. Remember, this is not the host name, so the certificate authority, and then the name of the host name of the server that's hosting the uh, service. So in this case, it's gonna be isengard.middleearth.local. The template that has that ESE1 vulnerability, which is gonna be findme1a. And then the we're gonna supply user that we want to attach to the certificate. So in this case, it's gonna be Gandalf, which is a domain admin on this network, and then provide the DNS. So this one's gonna be domain controller, and it's gonna be the host name of it. So in this case, it's Mount Doom press enter, and then we'll see that it requests a certificate or it saves it as Gandalf underscore uh, Mountain Dune. So it gets these two from this flag and then Mountain Dune from the um, DNS. So now we can get the NTLM hash. All right, so what we'll do next is we'll get the NTLM hash with the auth option of certify. We'll pass the flag of .pfx for the um, cert file and then give it the name of the certificate and then provide it the DCIP, press enter, and it says it found it found two because uh, remember we have Mount Doom and we have Gandalf, so we could press the zero option, which is this one right here, because we want that user, and then we get the NTLM hash of that account. So what it does is um, it has the certificate already, and then this auth command, it requests a TGT using that certificate, also known as pass a certificate. So once it gets that TGT, the way that it works is that the KDC attaches the NTLM hash to it. And the reason for that is just in case that the environment doesn't accept Kerberos authentication and it accepts NTLM authentication, it will have this um, fallback of allowing NTLM authentication, which is what we're abusing in this case. So we're extracting the NTLM uh, from that. And, and now we can use any pass the hash tool that you like. In this case, we'll be using CrackMap exec. All right, so we have the CrackMap exec tool and we'll be passing the SMB protocol, the uh, machine that you want to authenticate against, which in this case is going to be the domain controller. That's the IP address. You can also put the host name, the user that we're going to be authenticating as, and then the hash, so capital H, and then the colon followed by the hash and whatever option you like, which um, I like shares. So we press enter and we'll see that it does authenticate with the um, green pluses and it shows pwned, which means you have administrative access on this machine. And the way that you know, or the way that um, crack map exec declares or finds out that you have administrative access is by having read and write on the admin share. 
So whenever you have read and write on any admin share on a machine, that means you have administrative access on that machine. So since we have that on the domain controller, um, then we can say that we own or pwn the uh, domain itself. So now we can look at the remediations for this. So let's go look at our certificate authority. So on our uh, certificate authority, we're gonna go to tools and then certificate authority. It'll load up and then just drop this down to certificate templates. So these are all the published templates that we have in the environment. We have the two vulnerable ones right here. And then if we click on manage, uh, we'll be able to create templates. So templates provides a certificate and certificates are used for authenticating for certain things. So there are some default ones, which are pretty much all of these below the directory email replication. Uh, these are automatically published. These top threes were custom or ones that I manually made. The LDAP S one. So for my domain controller, I needed to set up LDAP S. So what I needed was a certificate. So I created an LDAP S certificate that is now on my domain controller. So because of this, I was able to enable LDAP S on the, on the domain controller. So for reasons like that are why you need uh, certificates in an environment. So again, from here, I just click manage. And right here are all the certificates that are, are not enabled or not published. So whenever you're looking at the CertiPy output, one of the flags that it does is it checks um, if it's enabled. Now, if it's not enabled or if it's set to false, then that most likely means that you're not gonna be able to exploit it. At least in my cases, I, I've not been able to exploit it. So you might see where it shows ESC1 vulnerable, but make sure to check if it's enabled or not on the CertiPy output. And I'll put a little screenshot of, of what I mean exactly. So uh, these two were the vulnerable ones. Now, whenever you create a template, and this is the way it's instructed on uh, by Microsoft, is you look at one that's already currently here, and you go to duplicate template. Now, it has the same properties of the one you're just duplicating from, and from here you go into changing things. So you could like change the um, uh, name of it or, or whatever you like, the settings as well. So I believe this is why a lot of times we get misconfigurations because an admin might not know that this one template has uh, misconfigurations that can be exploited. So they will um, duplicate it and make a different template for something completely different, but it has these same uh, misconfigurations on there that uh, will get overlooked and create more vulnerable templates in the environment. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to remediate it. Now, if we look at the configurations right here of this one, so we'll just go to properties the misconfigurations that CertiPy uh, calls out is going to be over here in the security options. So it says that uh, domain users have enrollment rights. Now having enrollment rights isn't necessarily a misconfiguration, but um, it allows this template to be exploited by any user. So having this um, allowed isn't a big deal. So I'll keep that allowed because maybe domain users actually need to enroll in this certificate. So that's not the one I'm gonna typically uh, call out exactly. The main thing right here is the supply and the request. So it should be uh, this option right here. Now, if a user were to uh, click on supply and request while they're configuring this, they get this error right here, which uh, gives them a warning. But like I mentioned a while ago, whenever you're creating new templates, you just click on it and then duplicate it and then make changes. So if this one's already misconfigured with this and then it gets duplicated, somebody doesn't see that warning message because they might not deal with this page at all. So we're gonna set this right here to uh, build from this Active Directory information. And then under issue requirements, we're gonna require manager approval and uh, click apply. And then we're gonna delete the um, one that is enabled or published. So we're gonna delete that one. And now we're gonna create, or we're gonna publish uh, this, this uh, one that we just changed. So we go to new certificate template to issue, and then we scroll down to that find me one A, uh, which is right here. And then we'll go back and run that same certified command, uh, the find one and uh, see if it shows if it's um, vulnerable anymore. So let's go take a look. All right, so we'll recall that same certified find command, uh, press enter. It saves it into a new file, which is gonna be this one right here. And then uh, let's do that same grab by vuln command, uh, dash A1, and then paste that. And then uh, now instead of three, we see two. So remember it was find me one A that uh, we made the changes to. 
Uh, we didn't make any changes to the find me one B, which is uh, why it's still flagged as uh, vulnerable. And if we output the file and then go look at the find me dash one A, which is this one right here under entry 34, we can see that the um, enroll, enrollee uh, supply subject is now set to false. And if we scroll down, um, even though the domain users is still um, enrolled, which again, isn't necessarily the misconfiguration, uh, we can see that it's no longer flagged as being vulnerable to ESC1. So now if we were to try to run that same request, that certifier uh, request, um, it won't work. So now we can run that same request um, with the same template of find me 1A and still pass that domain admin. You press enter and you'll see that it uh, is not able to get it. It gets the um, subject uh, DNS required error, but essentially um, it's not able to include the uh, SAN whenever you're making that request. And if you do LS, you'll see that it's not saved. Uh, failed to request certificate as well. So uh, with that remediation, it's a pretty quick remediation, but I do see this a lot in environments. A very easy way to exploit and get domain admin. Attacking ADCS is a very quick and easy way to um, escalate privileges. The, honestly, the only hard part is getting domain credentials, uh, but even that isn't too difficult to, in a pen test. So feel free to check out the ESC8 video as well. Uh, that one's a little bit longer and I go more into finding the manual and automated way to exploit it. Um, if you want some more videos about ADCS, feel free to let me know and that'll let me know that these videos are getting some a good traction and I'll put some more time into making videos about ADCS. Thanks for watching.